the jinn have more control over the Dajjal world than humans? Are those in Silicon Valley working with jinn world, the nature of silica? Mm -hmm. They like these jinn questions and everyone wants to ask jinn questions. All right. Where was that question? We have no control over their world. We're teaching people about their world. Humans have no control in their world, don't even know that they're being manipulated. The only reason they're giving permission for these teachings is because that system is already on earth. He's already on earth, his, his government is established, his parties and his raves are in those areas where they're not supposed to be. Those people who are raving and dancing, those are his influencers and his awliya. Those are his representatives, they do their da'wah, that's their da'wah is to corrupt the hearts and minds of people. Did you think that they were going out and going to preach? Those are his preachers. So when Prophet dispatched knowledge, all the sahabi went out as da'is, they came out to teach. Those influencers are his teachers to corrupt the hearts and minds of people and they've now entered into those areas. They'll try to enter into Mecca and Medina but be forbidden and they'll have their party up at that palace. He's here now. He's now establishing his government and he's establishing his financial system. His financial system is digital. These coins, digital coins are his. The NFTs are his. A block chain is his. It's being sold as if you'll be decentralized when you're actually going to be completely centralized because he holds the key to that chain. So he's now establishing his financial system. He's doing his da'wah in all the holy cities where he's not supposed to be. So he's already here. And all the teaching is that most people didn't know he's a jinn. They say, oh my God, we think he's a jinn. How do you think he was going to do what he was going to do? It's jinn realities to raise the dead and lift the dead. It's all jinn manipulation and, and that's their world. His coming is that reality. And the people who can't take the presence of those jinn, they die off. So now then they've been inoculated. When the number is correct enough and high enough, they'll begin to present themselves. So these inoculations are not related to any sickness, it's to prepare people for their presence and their manifestation upon this earth. When the numbers start to go to 100 million, 100 billion or how many we got in this earth? 7 billion? Yeah, when they get around 6 billion people who have been uh, properly <laughs> think, they're going to appear. So this his system is already here, that's why they're teaching. So there are humble people who hear this teaching and they go, oh, hmm, this is all, okay. And then they go out and begin to give khutbahs and teachings and preachings about it. And then the not so humble ones, these knowledges go out and the jinn take it and put a sharat and throw it into the hearts of people so that they can begin to talk and understand from these realities. So it's an awakening, a light that coming out through a system to notify people that that is already on this earth. So everything is now being put into its place. People have to wake up and understand. So that's why these knowledges and permission to even teach these realities, these are under the flags and, and the sword of Imam Mahdi salam. InshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it okay for us to have a taweez from a local Naqshbandi center? These, these questions are best that you don't ask them. So, you know, we, we have a taweez, we have a du'a on it. I don't know who gave you what and what du'as on it. So this, you throw out to 2,000, 3,000 people, you'll corrupt everybody. So these are not things that uh, one should consider. If there's a shaykh that you believe in, that you trust in and maybe you think his du'a is of a nature that uh, you want something from it, then you get from what he has and they make du'a on that and that recipe is upon that reality. Now can you go out and say, can we just go anywhere and get one? 
anyone can do whatever they want, but I would not ever verify or validate anything that uh, is not involved with us. Right? You go to a Turkish bazaar and the guy says, no this is Naqshbandi. What does that mean? There's many different Naqshbandi people, many different things. So these are not things that you know we can… you can ever say to an audience that will go out to two, three thousand people. The system is and the heart should be completely understanding, this my shaykh and what he has is what I want and that's it. And if I go to left gate, Shaykh Nazim's maqam, that's it, take whatever you can. Now go down the street to Baba Joe and Baba Ji, I don't know what they did with it. I don't even know if it's Naqshbandi in it. Sometimes they open it as Ayatul Kursi but he said, no I read on it but that, that's something different. Ayatul Kursi is Ayatul Kursi. So that, that world is not something that you sort of pick and save and go to different places and, and get this at a discount, go here, get this, that, that's not the way it's done. So you take from your shaykh, that's what you trust, you take from his teachings and then it's ignited. When you support, we said before, my kids used to run into Starbucks because they had all of these Starbucks cards, they were just free plastic, so they would take them. And go, Baba, I got all these cards, now we can have free coffees. <laughs> I said, thanks, but first of all those cards are there like that because it's of no value until you put something on it. So once you put something on it, it has a value. So that has its own secret that when you're trying to get something from the shaykh, when you support, that support unlocks a reality that gives from Allah a symbol of faith. Everything comes from Allah When Allah is, is watching over the student and the interaction with the teacher, Allah is inspiring the teacher that he doesn't believe in you. So he's just coming and asking for du'a. So what Allah put on Holy Qur'an? What's written on that wall? Khud amwalihum. Huh? What's the pronunciation Shaykh? Khud amwalihum. Take their money, not even ask, take it. Why? To show their faith. They don't believe in you, eh, coming for, okay, get do like this, 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 okay, I mean. But a huge step in faith is that, no, actually I'm going to support. And as a result of me showing an action, I took one step. Allah then come now 99 step, they step toward you, means they believe. Now Allah releases its power. But when the person doesn't believe, there's no transaction. There's a movie where the lawyers are teaching. The guy is about to do something and the lawyer says, I can only remain silent and act as your lawyer, give me a dollar. He said, well I have to give you a dollar because as soon as this contract in exchange of this money is given, I am officially your attorney because you gave one dollar. With this one dollar I accept because every contract has to have a, a financial, what do they call it? A ceiling of the contract. Because you sign a contract they'll say, was any money exchanged? Then it wasn't sort of enacted or enforced yet. And lawyers are showing that. But the lawyers of the heavens is more where Allah would just say, they don't really believe. If they believe then they move towards it. Now if they don't even have money to… But they say, no we want to be of service, their khidmat is as powerful. So there are many people who are serving, putting out food, doing everything. Whatever they're asking, Allah is accepting because they gave their service, they're doing what they can. So then tariqah is a, is, is a real symbol of faith. It's not imaginary that when I believe in something, I support it, I move towards it. It's not He's going to give me anything, Allah is going to open for me. So our whole life was to show Allah no, no, we love Sayyidina Muhammad we're conducting majlis, we love Prophet we go out and do our mawlid, we bring food, we go out onto the street with Fatima Zara jackets and to show this love for Prophet So what? That our faith becomes real and very powerful. And the more you, you, you make it to be real, 
the more power that Allah dresses with the faith of the individual. And that's what the tariqahs come to teach, how to make faith you know from imaginary to real. And when it's real it's very powerful, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can we avoid observation when we are going out into the real world and involved in work? Yeah, the observation is spiritual, it's not work. When we talked last night, it was not that you hide and you know sit on your couch and play video games. This was related to spiritual progress and making a name for yourself. That if, if you, which we said now the majority of people just want to be a, a particle, they want to take uh, five articles and begin to give people talks on them, give fatwas in the comment section. They're trying to make themselves into something when yet they achieve nothing. And that's, that's just in the religious world, everyone's copying and pasting somebody else's things and then giving talks on it and then giving isharat and guidance on it. Oh Mawlana said recite this, oh Mawlana said recite that. Means that particle is extremely active trying to be recognized. And then unbelievers completely, you know, post your face, post your every inappropriate thing. So that's all the system that this dajjal has put on this earth now to make people very particle. And as a result he promises them hayat al-dunya, why his one eye been popped is because he has no nur and nur his agents produce no nur. As a result they actually pull the nur from people, darken them and grant them hayat al-dunya that you can now have hundred million dollars and you're go out and you, you're a da'i for us, you do da'wah for us. So he gives them dunya only. But in exchange he pulls their light out of them. So then they lose their eye and that's why they cover the eye that is the light of nur. There's no light in their activity and has no connection to the heavens. And that's why he's one eye and that's why the, their system is to pull the light from people and their actions are all actions that, that take the light away from the souls of people. But this isolation and particle is related to this spiritual sickness. That try your best to sit and isolate, after work you come home, do your zikrs, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, draw no attention to yourself in the spiritual realm, don't go to masjid, sort of doing all these things so that everybody looks at you as something particular, it's nice particle and particular to be something nothing. And if you go in the mask and nobody sees you, nobody identifies you, then alhamdulillah you become more of a wave reality until you can seclude and seclude and seclude and the wave reality and the dress begins to open inshaAllah. Assalamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, please Sayyidi what is the sign that we operate from the heart and not from the head? You know that you're operating from your heart when it doesn't make sense to your head. Means that when the isharat and the teachings come that you're in your heart contemplating through your heart that you take this reality, you understood this reality and that you're trying to act upon it. If you take the reality and begin to contemplate in your head that maybe he meant that or maybe it's not this, maybe you're not ready for that. Maybe, then before you know it that, that knowledge went from here and came to here. And as a result of coming here it now shaitan plays with it and says, no, this, no, maybe that, no. And that's where we want to stay away from the head. The head is always going to be in conflict with the heart. The head and the aqal of somebody wants to do what, you know, shaitan is whispering them. But the heart should only be for Allah Where my heart I'm understanding this teaching, samina wa atana. And that was the way of the, the holy companions to the reality of Prophet But with now in dunya, my goodness they want to sit with five people, they don't listen. You actually we can talk right away that don't be angry, don't be angry and five minutes later they go downstairs and they're angry. So what happened? Then that teaching didn't really enter the heart. The person is thinking and people are thinking, oh, he always says this, oh, it doesn't mean anything. And <laughs> it went into the head.
But when they say, no, I want to really reach, you know, then I'm going to go and try to do everything to lock myself from anger, put something in my mouth not, not to show, try to bring out all my love, try to have a character of love, be overly loving with people so that to combat my anger. But if it just come and then it goes. So people who operate from their heart, their heart becomes, what's the word? When it's soft. Latif but something else we say, huh? Rajat. Rajat. What did you say? Rajat. Rajab? No, Rajab, Rajab. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, very, very soft. What's the Arabic they say in sujood? Sujood. Khushia. Khushu. We have in Farsi too, khushu. Means what? Like dust, like, like particles, so soft. That they, they cry, if they feel they've done something wrong, they go home they cry out of a subtlety. If the energy is coming then they begin to cry, There's, they have a very subtle heart, not hard, you know, not, you know, that's why those madhab people they produce very hard-hearted people, they're very angry people. They're, they're, oh, there's no khushya, you, you, you could hit a hammer into their heart, it still wouldn't be soft. But the heart has to be so soft, so soft that it can cry like on an instant. Because it feels energies, it feels the emotions, it feels things. So the heart has to be taken to that state. When somebody is hard in their belief, hard upon people, they have to practice the opposite. They have to be loving, they have to be sort of soft, they have to be gentle and delicate. So that to bring that reality. But again they hear it but they don't obey. And that's why Allah is describing they have ears but they don't really hear. So people are not turning on the ear of the heart in which to activate and to reach to that reality. But Allah has His own way of softening people, right? If somebody is not soft, Allah will begin to grind them through sickness and difficulty because it just pound, pound, pound and before you know it that person crying all the time from just the pain and sickness. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Are we allowed to know the location of Imam Ali salam, the victorious lion of Allah on this earth? Yes, your heart. Now can you go to his home and knock on the door? No, I don't <laughs> think there's any security that would allow that, right? So these are, these are hidden uh, but he's very much apparent in your heart. That's why they're teaching everybody has to connect on a wavelength, has to connect on to the soul reality because there's not a place that we can go with our physical body that we can be with them. But as soon as you park your body and practice to bring your soul out, its light can begin to move and through your soul you see him right there present with you with good character. So this was always with even Sayyidina you know, Imam uh, Sayyidina Khidr salam. You go and they say, well I didn't see Sayyidina Khidr, we said, but your heart is clean and good, you close your eyes, he's right there in front of you. Because at the speed of light they can be present. As soon as you mention or have in your heart a, a khatar and a love, we're saying that the speed of the soul is beyond understanding. But Allah gave us an understanding in regards to Sayyidina Sulaiman Asif whom had uh, knowledge of the book. I'll bring it to you before you even stood in, he brought the photocopy of the throne in front of Sayyidina Sulaiman So it means he brought it with a power of faster than the speed of thought. The time his eyes clicked it was already in the presence. But the jinn whom are using a different technology said, it's going to take time. By time and he was going to go steal it, he's a freak. He was going to steal their palace and bring it. But the one whom has knowledge of sharia, and the sharia of that time, he, he replicated it and brought it. And that's why Shiva salam, said, that it appears to look like my palace. Not that, hey, you stole my chair, you, what is that? How could you be a prophet of God, you stole my, my throne, you th stole my palace, you brought it all here? But he said, it appears to be similar to mine. So it means this is our power that they have, inshaAllah, for their soul. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can we meet the reflection of ourselves in another person and feel we are the same? Madad, forgive me. 
no problem. Read the reflection of yourself in another person and know that you're the same. Yeah, I think it's that we're confusing many different things. That you know, these are like these philosophy types of things where we think of all the, the possibilities of questions that we can ask. But let's stick with what we're practicing now of being nothing and connecting with the light, connecting with the shaykhs, connecting with Rosa Sharif and to open the reality of the soul, inshaAllah. When that soul is open, its authority is open, then more understanding in that subject would be, would be given. But not to confuse all these other teachings, that's why when there's no guide then communities become lost. So Hindu and Hinduism when they had guidance they understood that those were powers of saints. When a people withdraw and distance from the reality of Allah their punishment is to lose guidance. And as a result of loss of guidance, it's a collective group of people making up rubbish. But when there was a guided individual was teaching that this is an attribute of a saint because they're all ilahi, they have a Divinely dress. You don't attribute saintly powers and realities to a person but it's from an ocean of Allah Allah dresses that servant from Allah's ocean of might and power. As a result their soul is able to do many things. If they lose an ocean of guidance and people sit together and say, oh it was, he must be like a god, he was like this, he was like this. And that's, that's when Allah turned from a nation because of bad character and bad actions. Then leave them to themselves to be lost and misguided. But when Allah loves the nation and loves them, continuously is guiding them towards what Allah is correct and what pleases Allah So the Muhammadan nation is continuously guided by Sayyidina Muhammad and that they, they try their best to define certain realities so that Allah is always pleased with them and they keep the adab and don't transgress the limit into their understandings and their realities. But these powers that they describe, these are all the powers of awliya. There are awliya who are in charge of things growing, vegetation moving, there are awliya in charge of everything. Angels are in charge of everything. If angels are doing it, the awliya Allah must be in command of it, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, uh, what is the best way for Westerners to be introduced to and learn about the concepts of Islam and the Sufi way, how to take the first steps on this path. Thank you for these teachings. Sure, salaam. First is that you can help me, help me at nurmuhammad.com and then we send an introduction email, we send the introduction into the meditation and then the videos to come into the understanding of meditation or energy, whatever is attracting that individual towards that teaching. If they want to learn about the energy best that they study the videos and, and you can search within the YouTube videos or on our Nur Muhammad website of the topic that you're interested in. If it's meditation you would search the meditation, if it's energy they would search the energy that way they could come towards that understanding and again the help me email is to continuously guide people. But not overburden people with too many laws and, and rules that yet they don't understand anything and then you got to do this, 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 this right away. So tariqah doesn't teach that way, tariqah teaches very slow, come towards that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Can you please guide us on how to get out of the state of Summa amanu, summa kafaru and just submit. InshaAllah do the, the practices, the meditation again is very powerful. That you want to bring a light stronger than your light. If you can sit just to, to meditate and connect your heart a little bit every day so that that energy begins to dress, then begin to support, then begin to do the awrad, begin to do the practices slowly, slowly then that builds the faith of the person.
And we said before by the support that they give locks their foot with the shaykh because you're in it, you're invested in it. So we described before that when they offer the kids free classes at university or at a community college, they never went. It's free, where would you go? You didn't care if you attended or you didn't attend it. So but when they went and they paid a tuition, well the, 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 everybody made sure they went because the kids got to go, the parents hit, go there, we paid all this money for this class. So there's a hikmah in that understanding when you support something, you're vested and invested in it. And as a result of being in it, you're locked in it, you support it, you believe in it. When you're supporting then you want to watch every video that came out, what did he just talk about, what was, what was this, what was that? So that's immensely important but if it becomes like a, a free course then people don't really invest in it, don't take it seriously and they're free to do that too. So if that works for some people then alhamdulillah. But that's the hikmah and the wisdom of, of the turuqs of why they're very strong with their community and their, their students are very strong in their faith and they establish a lot. So when other people look at other communities and why the tariqahs established so much, it's because of the system that Prophet has, has put upon them and their teachings of how to reach towards that ikhlas and that sincerity because the shaykhs are the masters of people's nafs. So the nafs has to be tamed and has to be in control. So the shaykh has to find a way in which to control someone's nafs. In this day and age too many rules would make the nafs run. So it has to be based on love, on sweetness, on kindness and then support. As you're supporting the shaykh is throwing a rope around you and grabbing you. And once you support, support, support they have a firm grasp, very hard to run. You, you know, where are you going to go? Are you going to redo that whole thing again with another shaykh? And he says, oh forget it, no way, I'm going to stay. I want to listen, what's the next video? <laughs> That's the reality of, of, uh, of our nature and we find that in everything in our lives. That anything we, we, we've invested time into, we take it more serious and as a result we benefit from its understandings. You read it and you really absorb it because you're, you're invested in it with either your time, with anything, uh, with anything in our lives. If you put enough time into it, you go out onto the streets and give food for it and you're continuously doing that, doing that, doing that, you're tying yourself to that reality, then you're meditating and what happens then? Your heart and soul has a love. Right? I can't come to your brain and convince you. What your brain to brain is going to do what? But Prophet described, you'll be with whom you love. So we described in other talks, love and muhabbat is so powerful that it's a magnet that when people begin to feel that sense their soul is locked onto that. And you, you can't redirect that because Allah now has bound the soul onto that reality. And that love is a love for Sayyidina Muhammad that they feel the reflection of the shaykh is reflecting a Muhammadan light, their ishq and muhabbat for Prophet becomes so intense and so strong and they feel it emanating through that teacher. That's why it's important for the teacher not to draw attention to himself. Don't keep publishing on the internet, I'm this famous one because I did this, these are my mujahs, these are, these are my, my miracles, these are my, uh, all, all these amazing secret things I've, I've done, these are my secret uh, things. You're drawing people's attention to the wrong thing. You, you're just supposed to not be present. You're supposed to be emanating the ishq of Prophet so they feel, oh I feel so connected to Prophet so take yourself out of that picture. That's why I'm weary in the last days of the people who post too much about their miracles. There's no need for anyone to know about your miracle because if everyone wanted to post their miracles they would forget about the miracle of Prophet And that's why they don't go around talking so much and that's all their teachings. We don't talk too much about Allah because then you cut out the Khalifa. You talk about Sayyidina Muhammad 
so that to draw people's attention to Prophet If you start talking too much about Allah then people forgot about Sayyidina Muhammad and it's about you and Allah. So then that's a big, big tariqa, tariqa al-adab against the adab of tariqa. Talk, talk about the love of Prophet so that people will be drawn to that love, that ishq and that's where they have to be locked so that Prophet nazar is upon them guiding them, directing them and sending every fires and every blessing, Prophet will take them to Allah inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifun. Wa salaam ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>